Hello, we're at a property today and we'll be looking at an opportunity to show you an example of how it spreads. And so, in this uh, property, it's a terrace house property, so they tend to have very long gardens and we would not tend to get it at the far end uh, a lot of the time. So, as you see here, you've got quite a large amount of Japanese knotweed and this is what Japanese knotweed looks like um, after it dies back for the summer, it leaves behind these um, brown, hollow, uh, cane-like structures. Um, these have formed out, normally they, they're bolt upright, but they're very easy to see um, with the guys down. So that's a huge amount of not we should get at the far end of the garden. There is also a stand of knotweed in the garden area. So as you see here, it's a lot, lot shorter than the knotweed that was previously seen. And if I just tilt this up, you can see the distance of the knotweed in the foreground, in the background, compared to the knotweed in the foreground, how far this knotweed has uh, travelled in essence to emerge in this um, lawn area. So basically what's happened is, because you've got so much knotweed at the far end of the garden, the rhizomes have um, stretched out and they've come into the garden area and they start to grow. Another interesting factor about this garden is how not we can actually get through any crack and crevice. So what we've got this here is a breeze block wall, well, fairly man well maintained, a couple of gaps and cracks in there. And what's happened is you've got a knotweed stand which has pushed its way through the crack the base of that, if you just a little bit closer, you can see previous year's growth and then this year and then another previous growth which has died back for the winter. So that just highlights how easily knotweed can um, get into cracks and crevices regarding brickwork, I guess in there with uh, cement and so on and so forth and that is how it can push itself through. Thank you.